Hello everyone and welcome back to episode 12 of our slow and immersive playthrough as Venezuela in Victoria 3. And we've made it to 1910, so we're nearing the end of the game. Uh, oh, I guess right, well, last maybe quintile of the game. Let's go ahead and keep going, just resolve this event. This afternoon, Mano Antonio Matos, leader of the industrialists, delivered a theory speech advocating for the enactment of poor laws. Yep, this should ease the path to reform greatly. Go ahead and unpause. Keep the time running. We have shift work unlocked. Rotating teams of laborers in and out of a workforce is a sound way to maintain a steady flow of production over the course of a day much longer than could be expected from one team working extended hours. Oh, okay, doesn't really change much for us. But we continue to try to uh, keep unlocking techs and pushing our economy forward through technology as we are persistently, have been persistently capped by our labor force in the last 30 or 40 years. And Feels like there will be a socialist revolution coming our way soon as well. Which should be interesting. But otherwise, overall, we are in decent shape. Alright, literacy wise, standard of living. It is increasing, just not particularly quickly. Not or not fast enough, I don't think. Conquer state, North Africa, United. Have a look, United States. So who won? The Liberals? Democratic Republic. Yeah, it seems like the Liberal Revolt has actually beaten the old Republic that was run by Southern plant, uh, plantation owners and uh, the military. Yeah, Colombia is dealing with an Amazonian uprising. Seems. You have... A movement to enact landed voting. Hear it again. We've gone from to universal suffrage for a number of decades and then back to technocracy, uh, which is our current form of government. Uh, oof. There we got serious socialist revolt coming. Coming on, and not surprisingly, perhaps. Let's keep pushing. We need more innovation. Grassroots support for law. The political wills and desires of the lower classes will always remain an opaque matter. For whatever reason, support for poor laws has spread like wildfire across Venezuela, spurred on by charismatic speakers and lively debates in small-time social clubs. Go ahead. Increase enactment success chance. Poor laws. Oh, our population is growing. At least one percent. Okay, standard of living is edging back up to where it used to be. Uh, literacy is no, literacy is good. Literacy has gone up significantly. We've gone from ten percent to six percent in uh, or is it almost uh, eighty years? Oh, it will be eighty years in. Or 75, I guess, so far of the game. Oh, but we keep building universities to further increase our technological progress and adopt the best production methods to use as little labor and as much of the advanced goods as possible. Electrical capacitors unlocked. Electrical capacitors allow for the increased usage of electricity without the necessity of having a directly connected generator. Okay, electric sewing machines for textile mills, automatic power looms for textile mills, even brine electrolysis for explosives factories. Let's have a look. So textile mills and explosives factory. We have a very good explosives industry. Good. Wow. Get that up even further. We now have poor laws. Okay. Government petition completed. Perfect. So we could produce even more explosives. Do we really need to though? No, not really. We don't. That's interesting. So one explosives factory can produce between 50 and 150. 
right? So we can triple through through technology, triple the, our output through technology, right? Same labor, same wages, we triple the output. Uh, that is quite impressive. Um, let's go ahead, check out our textile mills. And so we could do electric sewing machines again. We don't even need that, mate. That much clothes and automatic power looms. Uh, okay, that's useless. We use more electricity and fewer laborers. That is something we can do. Something we can do in all of our farms is trying to unlock as much labor as we possibly can. I'm going ahead and stop subsidizing these as well, although it didn't cost us anything before. Do we have any text textile mills? Serious, we do. Not that they employ a lot of people, but let's make use of that electricity that we have. Stefan von Balagan has been sent into exile by Austria. Okay, Oops, sorry. So if we pause. Go ahead and do a new research. What else? What else can we do? Nitrogen fixation, chemical fertilizers, plastics, electric arc process, steam turbine. I think what we actually need is something like telephone combustion engine, perhaps, because we can produce autos. Go ahead and that we can do silk vulcanization elastics for textile mills let's go ahead and do art silk and then we do combustion engine the vulcanization will hopefully spread and that will allow us um yeah that will allow us to produce silk in our synthetic plants that's your silk and that means we can actually produce luxury clothes in our market maybe export seems odd yeah huh trying to figure out how do we actually become an export kind of oriented economy right because close to the mexican market let's do that where is it actually we'll coffee to america austria we can we can export our dyes to austria. these engines we can actually Export them to Austria and even France. Any explosives? No Austrian for our fabric. Go and try and export as much as we possibly can to the American market as furniture. We're kind of almost out of convoys, but ooh, glass so we can export. To Peru, Bolivia. Pretty close to us. Go ahead and is there anything we can cancel then? Sample market, trade routes, revenue, handcrank machine gun unlocked, farm it, 5 army defense plus 5% kill rate. By using a mechanical crank to rotate the barrel, it is possible to fire bullets at a much faster rate than a standard firearm. Okay. These are the most. Okay, we are importing artillery, but we kind of need to, I guess. From where? From German Empire. They're exporting a lot of other things which don't actually make us any money in the end. Hmm. Well, let's, wait. let's build luxury clothes and if we produce luxury clothes within our own market, then... Then we will stop importing. Maybe even start exporting. Let's see. Now we'll also... Hopefully, the positive epoch. The work of the positivists has deeply enshrined their principles within professional circle, circles in Venezuela. The principles of positivism are assured to guide Venezuelan professional institutions for many years to come. A big day, a glorious day, one collective, one purpose. We have here today in this temple librarians and laborers, shopkeepers and spinsters, carpenters and clerks. What a big day to see so many working towards the betterment of our fellow man. So let us change the order of today's events. Let us begin by offering each other the sign of peace. By nearing the next stage of our evolution. 15% technological research. Technology research speed. Wow, 10% education access, 10% qualifications. Positivism. Pretty positive development. 
is a positive development. Okay, explosives, factories, and volleyball are being constructed. More universities. Indeed, let's fill that cap. Right, so we can do it, get 140, so we have plenty of headroom in our innovation. Go ahead and speed up. Okay. It's going up. Okay, average standard of living is finally going up. We are running a deficit, which I'm not a big fan of. We could, in fact, even go higher and just you know, run a little surplus. Go ahead and try that. Yeah, but what we need is more people. More, 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 more people. So we got no people anywhere. There's reality of what we need. Look. Hmm. What else? What else can we invent? How else can we? We need to release labor in our economy, right? So we look at Zulia, our richest province. That's 57% of our GDP is from here. Tooling workshops. We make them publicly traded, get more capitalists in our Country steel tools, I mean, mm, yeah, I mean, in fact, if we just look at our goods, market prices, yeah, okay, small arms, uh, coal, we could build more coal, more motors, lead, I mean, nothing is particularly out of balance, more coal could be needed, coal mines, 2%, we are using dynamite, we could do diesel pumps, Publicly traded. Steam donkeys. Okay, we're using everything we can. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, more. I think our private sector is actually building some coal mines, so that's good. So everything is cheap in our market. What we need is more labor. You know? That is... Oh, our GDP is again falling. Or oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Ah, uh, Austrian market. Oh dear. Why? Trade agreement broken. Agreements between Austria no longer maintained due to relations between Austria and Venezuela are poor. Diplomatic ties with Austria lost. Losing their interest in Grand Colombia. Oh, come on, Austria. Why? Why do you have to be like? that with relations okay they don't even want to improve relations with us amical cooperative major power but ninth hmm okay diplomatic actions can we declare interest declare interest in oh, so Austria yeah Right, we've declared interest in the Balkans. We have one interest of our own. Can we, can we trade now, please? Please, Austria, don't, don't do this. Don't do this. Why you gotta be like that? Oh, all of our coffee, please, just crashed our economy. Okay, now we should be able to improve relations with them as well, no? No, we cannot. Hang on, but we now have an interest in the Balkans, Croatia. There you go, so why improve relations? Due to Austria losing their interest in Grand Colombia, we're no longer able to conduct diplomacy with them. But we now have an interest in the Balkans. Going on here. Turmoil. Okay, turmoil in Austria. 
one out of one and we're interested in the Balkans. Come on. Come on, Austria. Yeah, okay. Doesn't look like it's... Hmm. Sure, I understand why, though. An ongoing diplomatic action that increases relations between the two countries over time. Balkans' interest activated. There we are. We will now be able to participate in diplomatic plays, conduct diplomacy, create trade routes with countries in the Balkans. We are. Improve relations. Can't be improved because... Austria. Where are you? Where are you, Austria? Not here, but I guess we want to relation... The relationship between us is fine, right? We're genial, amicable, yeah, so perhaps it's just not possible to improve it any further. But could you please trade with us again? Yes, 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 it can. Yes, it can. Let's go get our coffee. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. It took years to build that up, and now you're gonna... You gotta be like that, Austria. You gotta be like that. Okay, well, hopefully... Itself out. Let's see. Dangerous equipment. The tooling workshop in Miranda. Workshops have been have seen an increase in workforce injuries due to increased mechanization and poor safety regulations. We cannot pull the brakes on the engines of progress. Indeed. Oh, city of plenty. The most prominent members of Miranda High Society have been seen organizing luxurious parties in the new and lavish urban buildings. So let them celebrate. No. Yeah. Have more universities. More universities, more, are we okay for paper? I'm still fine for paper, we can actually go... Actually owned. Let's see, I hope like... You guys aren't gonna start producing less paper. Let's have a look. Maybe I shouldn't have unclicked that. Even our like, life depends... On having a lot of paper. We're spending, right, goods for government buildings. We're spending 10,000 on paper. Let's go ahead and build maybe one more level and then subsidize it. Because... Well, let's actually go ahead. Buildings construction. Go ahead and build some paper mills. Right. Could actually go ahead and finish this government administration. We'll do that after that university. Oh yeah, we c it wouldn't hurt to artificially reduce the price of paper, to be honest. But yeah, we're spending 10,000 on paper. First is government administrations. Okay. Trade route removed again. Fruit trade route. Due to no reachable ports in Austria. Ah. Oh. Austrian aristocratic revolt. Yeah, come on. Sort yourself out. Do we have... We had an interest here, can we? Because there is no way we could, like, side with one of them. Oh, okay. There has got bigger things to worry about all over that. Ah, oh, that's no no help for our GDP though. Mm. Okay, building more paper. I can speed this up. Let's see how far can we get, God. Not very far, it's not nowhere near as smooth as our Chile playthrough. But I think I understand why now, because we've built too many things up front. Uh, and I, it was, I thought Venezuela would have enough population. You need to build even, even fewer things and really think about which buildings you expand. And accounting for the technologies you are going to research down the line. Uh, yeah, because otherwise you... You know, we have all these buildings, but no one, no one to work in them. Push through uh, each week. Like a few seconds of calculations. We're running a deficit. 
even though we are on highest taxes so that is worrying a world to win a socialist idea sweeping across venezuela the urban government has determined the drastic concessions hang on to arrest its progress must be considered there is sufficient momentum for a rapid policy change we will not capitulate the trade unions will always select vanguardist communist or anarchist leaders other interest groups are much more likely to select Anarchist communists and anarchist leaders, as pipes and upper strata in Venezuela become more loyalist, offer greater wages for their labor. Venezuela enables lower wage subsidies in welfare. Trade unions will always care. Other interest groups are much more likely. Guarantee better conditions for workers. Enables law regulatory bodies in labor rights. Okay, let's guarantee better conditions for workers. We now have regulatory bodies. Right, minus 20% dangerous working conditions. Government. Institutions have been created to regulate the excesses of employers. Institutions. Let's go ahead and push that up to level. Have some welfare payments. We can even go ahead and push welfare payments up. Stave off the red menace. We do also need to do something about our deficit. Let's have a look. What are we spending money on? Motor industries, maize farms. Because it's not even that much. So, perhaps we... I mean, can we though? Can we? Can we remove subsidies from these? Without, like, our entire economy just breaking down? I mean, I know we have motor industries in Zulia. They're actually doing just fine. Let's try this. Let's see what happens. Okay. Looks like they're doing fine. 176 from maize farms. Fine. We're keeping... Like, you know, by now, perhaps... Okay, we're keeping it as cheap as we possibly can. So we'll just go ahead and... No, oh, we want... Terrain. There we are. Proposal for trade agreement with Kingdom of France. Okay. Accept. Export. I mean, let's, let's go market. Uh, okay, those traders have been cancelled. Fine. What can we export? France. Our clippers. Can go to the American market. Tools. Wood. There you go. Like everyone needs logs. That's good. Let's try that. Our coffee. How about our coffee? No. French market. Negative productivity. Go ahead and just do it. Maybe they get into it. Fertilizers. Oil. Luxury furniture. Go ahead and speed this up again. Keep looking at our budget. And in 2000, we're spending on interest. That's that's the bad part. Railways, maize farms, interest, welfare payments. Ooh, two and a half thousand welfare payments. Oh yeah, that's maybe that wasn't such a good idea to increase that actually. Okay, people are falling. Oh, okay, now they're... Okay, they kind of vary quite a bit. Barracks, military wages, goods for government buildings, paper and clippers. Oh boy, yeah, we're spending 10,000 on universities. Okay, well, let's try and decrease the price of paper, maybe. That will save us like two grand if we decrease it by 25%, maybe. Right? I mean, each one of the buildings produces 100, so we could produce 320. Let's see. Let's get this constructed. Same with dynamite. We need more people. We got 20,000 per year only, but that's people. And you know, that's pop growth. There's only 5,000 of them actually work. 
four million. Okay. Industrializing, we are building stuff, but our GDP is not exactly shooting through the roof. Doing okay. On the other hand, though, okay, Colombia has won its war. They're at 10 million GDP, but they're at twice the people. GDP per capita 219. So actually, we're 2.3. Maybe, maybe I'm just too ambitious, so to speak. We're actually doing like way better, way better than anyone else too. I need to go back and look at our Chile playthrough and how, and just to remind myself is how far did we actually get there? Because I thought my impression was that we kind of improved, uh, you know, our GDP perhaps in like tenfold from the start. We're actually like the the richest country in Brazilian aristocratic revolt. Okay, we're doing very well, right? We're okay. Well, number forty-six worldwide. Okay, maybe not that well. But we're definitely doing better than anyone else in South America. That is true. That is a fact. Eight point seven thousand chiefdom. Wow. What do you have in here? What are you producing? Nothing. Okay. Uh, yeah. So blow up Mex. Oh, Mexico has been eaten up by the United States. Twelve million people. Only one pound person so actually life in venezuela is pretty good i just don't understand how do we engineer like a big breakthrough like a really big phobia no okay we're back to 4.6 million so that's good interestingly lower strata still struggling but I've given, like, I've done everything for you. Paying 40% in taxes. This is insane. What? All taxes. Okay. Hmm. Perhaps it's the tax that. Hmm. For laws for capita taxation. Everyone supports it. Good stuff. Proportional taxation, for example, very high. Would Change in revenue plus two thousand, but industrialists and landowners don't want it. Graduated taxation would be a negative net impact. Land-based taxation would be very much negative. Proportional taxation would be good, but only trade unions actually endorse this. Okay. Oh look, people. No, actually, landed voting has disbanded. Enact no migration controls. I mean, we have a legitimate government, industrialist and intelligentsia running the show. No one else is nowhere near as much clout, so... Nah, I wish this guy just... 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 go. Like, it's a little frustrating that he's the one that got stuck in the technate role, and it seems like there is no way I can get rid of him. Now, let's look at the ledger countries at Peace Ledger. Great Britain, number one, by GDP, 276 million. German Empire, 221. Uh, okay. okay, that's super prestige. Kingdom of France, third. United States, fifth. Russia, fifth. There's a great power. And then we got major powers. Spain, Austria, Italy, Brazil, great. Qing, Ottoman. Uh, and then we have the minor powers. So British Raj, Canada, Peru, Bolivia is actually number 16. Wow. They were 30. Lower than Cuba, Mexico, Norway, Philippines. Brazil. Maybe we're not doing that badly, but it seems to me like we're actually doing pretty badly. I don't know why. I wanna I want us to just kind of soar soar kind of forward. And just it's not really happening. Let's keep going, 1912. Um, Reduce the price of paper. Three weeks. 
Okay, it's good. We are slowly moving towards having a surplus. Hopefully, actually, this will make this a surplus. Let's go. More paper. So how much do we spend? Government. Goods for government. So 9.8k we spent on paper. Let's see how this goes. Okay. Cheaper paper. More paper. Unable to fully hire. Look for a wage of 4.3. Workplace safety office investment increased. All four of this. Minus 60% dangerous working conditions. Social security to two. Oof. Welfare payments. Really hope. Are gonna bankrupt us. Karl Liebknecht has been sent into exile by the German Empire government. Goods. So we're now spending K. 9.5k on paper. Interesting. Yeah, this obviously become less profitable. Paper is now cheaper. Give it a go. More universities. Hang on. Rising concerns. The intelligence have expressed their concerns about government decisions clearly favoring the interests of the industrialists. Oh, they need to accept we cannot always please everyone. Oh. Who do we need approval from? More. 50% uh, migration attraction would be great, to be honest. But investment pool contribution. Could actually, I think this needs to be addressed with this. We should still have industrialists on our side, but we need 10 for intelligentsia for that migration bonus. Oh, Universities. And we have a like a huge academia population, honestly. Workforce, academics. We have twenty-five. Just so other atheist. Looking for a better job, intelligence and petite bourgeoisie. Hmm. More, 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 more universities. What are we researching? Art, silk. Yeah, I mean, life should be like. Yeah, it's a tax. Perhaps it's a tax law we need to reform and work towards. Just not constructing anything. Just let's just lay off everything. Towering financial institutions catering to the needs of corporate finance. Investment banks primarily assist in the raising of capital for private enterprise. Sponsored by max number of companies minus 15% urbanization. Okay. Look, is there actually any companies? Actually, no, there's nothing, right? Attainable potential. Establish. You know, okay, we don't have any companies. But yes, we need to increase our budget surplus and just pay, uh, you know, decrease taxes, I feel. Miranda has come a long way since our attention was first brought to it, going from small houses and scattered farmlands to being on its way to become a blooming metropolis. Finally, Miranda shines like never before in corporate... Hang on. Market capital of Venice on market, 100% market access, plus 18 infrastructure, total urbanization... 1166, population 690,000, 34 unemployed, qualifications, average standard of living impoverished. This is not the end. Trying to get urban center efficiency. 
Okay. 25% loyalist. Oh, sorry, I was pointing at Miranda. 25% loyalist from standard of living increases. Okay. More loyalists is always good. Let's get, we're building another government. Uh, government administration. Yeah, we, we, I mean, it's okay if we run a small. So, but right now we need kind of a small surplus so that we can pay off this 2,000 interest. Right. What do we have in our queue? I mean, there's nothing. See, we're almost done with the art silk. So it unlocks rayon for synthetic plants. By using materials collected from plants, it is possible to create a relative approximation of silk for much cheaper. Okay, let's go to our synthetic plants then. Producing lots of dyes and they're super cheap. Let's go fewer dyes. Uh, we're going to put wood into silk. Nice. Got to be profitable. And let's say then for these textile mills we have here, we're producing super cheap clothes. So let's go craftsman sewing. Right? Produce some luxury clothes. Well, nobody even wants luxury clothes in this whole thing. Jesus. Life is so good. Everything is cheap. Everything is cheap here. Go old textile mills. And clothes are cheap. We can do Craftsman sewing, add some luxury clothes. Clothes are now expensive. Let's go electric sewing machines for Miranda. All right. Now we'll get more dyes, more electricity. All right. And we'll have cheap clothes, cheap luxury clothes. I think that probably will. I don't know, actually, we can still. We've got more space for more electricity here. Okay. Have a look how that works out. Alright, we got silk, we have fabric. Demand for dyes. Uh, synthetic plants. Need more. Yeah, there's nothing else we can do. Silk is pretty cheap. Oh. We need one of one more of these. So we need more dyes. Volcanization unlocked. Right? Just stop building stuff. Let's just import more dyes, right? Rubber used in the clothing industry provides many advantages, such as waterproofing and elasticity, but it becomes brittle in cold weather and sticky in hot weather. Volcanization is the process of combining the rubber with sulfur and heat to make it more durable and preserve its shape after manufacturing. Elastics for textile mills. Okay, let's have a look. Textile mills, elastics, even less. But no, we need more kind of simple clothes, right? Wait, was that? Uh, we need more workplace safety. And we need more simple clothes, actually. Luxury clothes aren't even that much in demand. So this is fine. Let's go with dyes, import, the Mexican market. And French market, since we have no cost for bureaucracy or tariffs from there. Yeah, let's establish that. How about... Yeah, that decreases the price of dyes in our market. Oh, good. Right. And this is just from one textile factory. It already takes, over, takes, takes care of the in, like, entire market. Minus 17% luxury clothes. The electricity is a little expensive in Zulia. But someone is already building some power plants. I guess that's the private sector. Okay. Diversity in Miranda. Oh, jeez. The ridiculous number of universities. I mean, 15. Paper, paper, paper. That's kind of what we need. I mean, combustion engine. Is that really going to help us, though? 
Old lovers. Conveyors. How about... Uh, we need more... Um, we need clippers to produce more kind of industrial port. Right? And we need for that... We need to have steamers. Can we produce steamers? We have shipyards. Reinforced wooden ships. Steamships. We need an ironclad for that now. Uh, okay, let's import them instead. In the American market. Right, and that will give us more convoys. Is that right? Okay. Ports. All right, give us more convoys. More infrastructure. All the nice, nice things. Right. Maybe we should be exporting more. Five million. Surely people will want our stuff. Let's get... We have bureaucracy. Let's go ahead and just get as many convoys as we can. And just export our stuff, right? I mean, we have to. There have to be people who want our stuff. Have to be, right? Our coffee. Surely. Luxury clothes. We're now, like, producing a lot of luxury clothes. Peru, Bolivia... Mexico, America, you all want our luxury clothes, I know it. Luxury furniture, nobody wants it. French peasant revolt, oh, French peasants, okay, they want luxury. That's it. Their loss, paper, no, I'm not giving away my paper to anyone. Silk, small arms, steel. French market, Brazilian market, Peru, Bolivian market. Oof. Oh, we're missing. Missing envoys now. Okay, let's see. Do we have any more ports anywhere? Sure, do we do? Yeah, we do. I know it. Industrial port. Okay, just need more steamers. Mm, okay. Perhaps we need to produce our own steamers. Military. Can we get our ironclad after this? Steamers. Import route. French peasants? No, let's get them from Germany, I guess. Will that give us enough uh, convoys? Yep, there we are. Good stuff. So there, what else can we export? Our hardwood. Uh, our grain. No, we want to keep our grain at home. Keep it cheap. Fertilizer. Plenty, guys. Mexican. American market, French market. Oh, again, out of convoys immediately. Oh, and bureaucracy as well. <sighs> Need more government administration. Hang on, let's go to our market. Let's just perhaps cancel maybe a few of these. Fruit things. Yeah, let's just... But they really aren't needed. Sugar. Nobody seems to want any sugar. Our wood. Wood. Steel. It's not expert. Okay, we're fine. We're hovering. At slightly positive. So hopefully, Eastern Caribbean market access from Venezuela supply network plus 86. Okay. Doing fine on infrastructure. We're doing fine on everything. Okay, we scraped 5 million GDP. Now we just need to like produce, produce, produce things. Right? Get trade routes set up. Okay. Can we please get enough uh, rice farms I'm employing? Okay. Why? Why do we have 29,000 people working in this when grain is like dirt cheap? Dirt cheap. And yet, it employs like 30,000 people. The ports, for example, that we actually need. Not getting there. Reduce supply worker strength to 96. Okay, there we are. Okay. Floating harbor unlocked. By keeping a dock at a constant level along a tidal waterway, ships can more quickly dock and transfer goods without having to consider relative changes between the waterway level and docks. 
Okay. Uh, made it to 1914. Two million people. Okay, five million GDP. So we're ten times up in GDP. GDP per capita up five times. Uh, sorry, what was it? Red Scare. The rise of communist regime in communist German Empire has spurred a sense of terror and mistrust across Venezuelan society. Many fear that Venezuela will be the next to fall to communism. Oof. Every newspaper on the stand bore, bore a title more extreme than the last. Shrill newsboys hawked them on corners, sending competing claims of atrocity and terror across streets. Assassins and madmen claim power in communist... Let's just slow this down. Assassins and madmen claim power in communist German Empire, cried one of them. Recovered Red Bible Recovered Red Bible reveals a agenda of world revolutionists, shout, shouts another. And amidst all of them march ten thousand wide open Amidst all of them march ten thousand wide open ears, soaking up each sensational word as they hurried along to their stations. It could happen here, does two percent upper strata become more loyalist? Trade unions Get red scare, decaying for nine years. The political strength. Rural folk get minus 20 political strength. A yeah, panic would be wholly unwarranted. Yeah, it could happen here. So, yeah, let's guard against this. Ooh, French peasant rule. Oh my god, Europe is turning red. Marching against peace. Protest protesters. Protesters? Inspired by the fierce rhetoric of Thomas Diaz, have carried out a march in Caracas, calling for military intervention against the communist regime and communist German Empire. We must save the communist German people from themselves. Uh, the people's energies are best spent on something more constructive. Dangerous warmonger. Perhaps of Apostrati Miranda become more radical. Come on, there's not much we can do about German communists. Be honest with ourselves. We have five battalions. Finding both the Venezuelan public and supposed political allies unreceptive to his ideas, Thomas Diaz, agitator from an industrialist, to enact no migration controls. Yeah. That imperils ideas in peace away from Caracas. Yeah. Running a massive deficit. Okay. Red scare will time out in nine years. Sorry, so we kind of ignored these journal entries. I didn't actually understand what they were exactly. I think now I do. They're kind of like the decisions equivalent from uh, other games like Hoy and uh, everything else. I guess perhaps more like Europa Universalis, although I rarely play that game. I haven't played it for like two or three years. But here we are, we need to pay more attention to them. The emergence of a powerful communist regime in a foreign country has aroused fears among certain segments of the population that Venezuela will be the next to fall to communism. Domestic political currents with left-wing agendas have fallen under scrutiny of anti-communist forces as they're accused of being harbingers of bloody revolution and agents of foreign powers. It will fail if at least one of these. Venezuela has enacted council republic, any civil war in Venezuela. Civil war is a revolution, progress is greater than 75%. If time runs out in nine years, triggers the event a subtler terror. Okay. Try and hold out against the red menace. But well, we are now 80 years into the game. And as I mentioned, it always feels to me like sort of the game is about to end. But actually, these later years, a lot more happens in them, so these 20 years will actually feel a little longer. Oh, GDP is falling again. Okay, we need, need more government administration urgently. I would even put it ahead of uh, the university because we cannot afford to run this, run up this deficit. We're already paying 2.8 thousand in interest. So let's just build these two, and that's it. We're going to. Hold off on building anything else. The white emigres, a stream of wealthy South German emigres fleeing the communist regime and communist German empire have sought shelter in Venezuela. 
bringing with them tales of revolutionary terror and unbridled proletarian excess. Oof. The worst was these new secret police, just like the old ones. They would round up people they didn't like, usually when all was dark and quiet, sometimes the day too. And if we ever saw liquor, liquor trucks going to their offices, well, we never saw our neighbors again. We had to get out. Very brave. We'll take good care of you here. Anything for communist German empires' most upstanding citizens. Give them a platform to tell their stories. Was to a character appears in Venezuela, Miranda gets emigrate politics, swaps an immigration attraction, minus 12.5% council republic pop support. Tragic. 25% was migration attraction, minus 25% council republic pop support. Zulia. Yeah. Okay, we have a comma. Where are these like people? We need. We, we definitely need workers. So, hopefully, uh, yeah. I mean, I welcome. We welcome immigrants, especially wealthy ones. But uh, unrealized taxes, three point three thousand. Okay, we're immediately losing. Like, Let's get the bureaucracy. It's gonna take ages. Can we maybe cancel a trade route? All right, that will work. To Russia. Go ahead. Keep our fruit here. Okay. Unrealized tax. Where is it? Unrealized taxes. Average uncollected tax is zero. Average tax waste 13%. Tax waste. The amount of taxes collected that are wasted due to inefficiencies or corruption prior to entering the government coffers. Oof. Average tax waste 13%. What do we do about it? Enter government coffers. Workplace safety office increased to four. Perfect. Can we get up to five? We don't have the bureaucracy to do it, unfortunately. Okay, what can we do to reduce corruption then? Migration controls, poor laws. Child labor compulsory. Primary school would be nice. Regulatory bodies. Rights of assembly. Mm. Commercialized agriculture. Yeah, it's really intelligence and industrialists in charge. So all is well. And it's 10 from very high taxes. Otherwise, you know, everyone is on board with our technocracy, right? I mean, there's a lot of radicals in our land. The number of radicals changed by 50,000 in the past year. Decreases in standard of living. 192,000 laborers are radicals. Clerks, machinists, other professions. Trade unions. Radicals here and there, but laborers. Hmm. What are the charts? Oh, sorry. Hmm, overview detail list. Laborers, what are you unhappy about? 7,000 radicals, for example, 8, 12, 12,000. Who are you? Zulia, rice farms, Catholic, hope is discriminated against. Okay, well, no surprise. Alright, 75% of them, laborers, support trade unions. Struggling, wow. Why are they struggling? Workforce dependence, workforce income, weekly pop income, dependence income, net income, weekly pop expenses. Workforce dependence. Okay, this is kind of a total and this is a breakdown. Well, okay, so net, you're positive. Grain, they spent 36. But guys, what can I do for you? Consumption. 36% of that consumption is spent on grain, but... And the rest on clothes. Well, I made them as cheap as I possibly can. So why? Current, struggling, five. Minimum expected is nine. Fine, I agree with you. Standard of living affects pop growth rate, which is currently minus 0.3. Well, it means below the minimum expected, this pop will become more radical over time. This pop and living struggling, five, is due to wealth, five. With... 
negative impact from pollution. 79,000 of them have a standard living below the minimum expected and will become more radical. They pay an average of 46% of their income in taxes, reducing their available money for pop needs. Yeah, we need to like sort out our budget, really. Let's build that last building, and that's it. We need to save money. 17.9 thousand of them have a standard of living below the minimum expected. Sure, but why? Weekly income. Still get paid a lot. Is that the problem? Everything is cheap. They need to get paid more. Why are they not getting paid more? Why are they not getting paid more? Where do they work? They work in rice farms. And rice farms are not profitable. That's why they don't get paid. So laborers get paid a measly wage. Interesting, yeah. So maybe it's not the best idea. Just, yeah, because what I went with is just make grain as cheap as possible. I don't think that's a good idea. And we shouldn't have really done that from the start. They keep it kind of base price, maybe it's not too expensive, but keep it around base price, right? Which increases their wages. I mean, what if we just cut off <laughs> the fertilizers for this whole thing? Mm -hmm. I mean, that I mean that would also drop farmers. It would take put farmers back into laborers. <clears throat> would be bad. But otherwise, fertilizers, coal, tools, but everything is cheap. So why? There's just not enough demand. Right? Not enough demand for the economy for everything that we've built here. So, for example, if, okay, let's reduce this by one. We just reduce this by one. Boom. Yeah, maybe that's all that's needed, but it's always the private sector that just builds like random stuff. Let's go ahead and stop subsidizing this. Right? Let's see, boom. No one works to works in maize farms, but now grain is going to like shoot through the roof. Isn't it? Go ahead and close one. Right, put these people into other buildings. Boom. Still profitable, so why are you throwing on cash reserves? Yeah, okay, that's a lot of pissed off people here that because we just closed down. And they lost 120 grand of cash reserves. Okay let's, okay, let's let this economy adjust. Let's see what happens. Perhaps we've been doing it all wrong and it's better to focus on wages. Um, perhaps that is so. so what was I We're trying to... Great Britain. Oh, what's going on British? What's going on in Britain? More communists or what? Why is it all British Guyana, unincorporated states in Great Britain? Boom. What was that? Sure. Kingdom of France. Okay, Kingdom of France has managed to beat back, beat back the peasant rabble. What about Germany? That doesn't, doesn't look good. Swiss liberal revolt. A combustion engine unlocked. A combustion engine allows fuel to be turned directly into mechanical power based on combustion taking place inside the engine constantly. Automobile production for motor industries, public motor carriages for urban centers, chainsaws for logging camps, combustion engine derricks for oil rigs, a truck transport mobilization options, motorized reconnaissance, compression ignition. Okay, so chainsaws for logging camps. Let's see. Chainsaws. We have logging camps, don't we? Give them chainsaws. Oil and tools. Fewer laborers, more machinists and engineers. Let's give that a go. Don't. Didn't we guys build like oil? Uh, surely. Yeah, oil. Okay, we haven't actually built them in Miranda. But we have oil in our market. Yeah, we have oil rigs here. Let's go. Logging camps. All right, and that's, we need tools and oil instead of motors. Okay, give that a go. 
And we upskill our laborers into machinists and engineers. Surely everyone should be happy then. Right, right. We have oil rigs. Yeah, there we go. Oil rigs now. Rail transportation. Tanker cars. Fewer laborers. More demand for transportation. Let's go ahead and do the same thing here. Right. How are we doing on transportation? Fine. Oh, transportation is expensive. Expensive in Zulia. We need to start building stuff though. Seriously, need to start building stuff. Public motor carriages, but we need autos. Right, but to get autos, we need motor industries. I mean, this motor industry. Use fewer engines, more cars. We need rubber. Do we even have rubber? Uh, rubber, pl rubber plantations, we do. Maybe these motor industries are better off. Better off being uh, automobile producers. Let's try it. Oh, oh, we have shortage of rubber. Okay, that will hopefully sort itself itself out shortly. Where is our rubber rubber plantations? Rail transportation. Publicly owned. Automatic irrigation. Okay, not necessarily needed right now. Let's let this market adjust. Okay. So if we do now have, let's go ahead and pu public motors, right? See what happens. Nothing good is happening. That's that's what's happening. Right. Motor motors. We are producing automobiles. So that's good. Go ahead and let the economy adjust a little bit. We need to pay down this debt, seriously. Okay, last university, and that's it, I promise. We're not building anything else. 28 more weeks of pain. Let's see. Deficit, though, that's worrying. Language in the classroom. Caribbean students sometimes use their native language in Venezuelan schools. Some have called for teachers to penalize the use of these languages, forcing children to speak the official language of Venezuela. Schools should teach them to speak the proper language. Indeed. Indeed. We need to assimilate everyone into the new Venezuelan culture. Which, to be honest, promote national... Oh yeah, we need to do this again as well. Get everyone to be Venezuelan. An upsurge of people in the regions neighboring Miranda have begun to embrace their new Venezuelan identity. Perfect cultural... Okay, it's not discriminated. A new national identity completed. Nation tips and various problems have become more loyalist. Okay. Venezuelan nation. From every corner of the land, people speak of their Venezuelan homeland. The North Andean identity is no more. Every North Andean pop in this country will simulate to Venezuela. Hang on, guys. And, yeah. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause here. We're in September 1916. And, yeah. Let's make a cut. We're coming up on the hour, guys. So I'll make a cut here. And we'll pick it up in the next episode. Yeah, nearing the end. Although another 20 years left, actually. Yeah, keep thinking the game kind of ends around 1900. 1936 is actually kind of half of the game. Or 40% of the game is in the 1900s. But uh, yeah. Actually, maybe, maybe we're actually doing better than I, I'm thinking. I'm kind of thinking. You know, it's not really going the way I wanted to. But 
But let's see. Let's see what else we can do in the next 20 years. Uh, yeah, I hope you're learning something. If you have any suggestions, let me know down in the comments. Otherwise, see you next episode. Bye.